Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we are going to try and answer that most common of questions. What game engine should I use? Now in the year of 2021, there are so many options out there and it can be daunting to try to figure out what engine to pick. But truth of the matter is there is no easy answer here, but there are some very common recommendations for certain scenarios. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to break down the scenario and I'm going to give you some recommendations. Now your personal taste could fit somewhere else. You may want a different programming language, a different model, something else clicks with you, and that is perfectly fine. I'm just trying to give you my recommendations, starting points for certain scenarios. Now this is all documented on dev game. So everything we're about to talk about here is written there with all of the various different suggestions and I'm going to break it down by uh, use cases. In each one of those it's going to have its own timestamp. They are in somewhat random order and let's look at the first one. In the first case you're trying to land a job. In that scenario, the answer is easy. The answer is Unity. The Unity game engine is the most marketable game engine out there. There are the most Unity jobs of any game engine out there. The second pick here would be Unreal Engine, but frankly, between those two, Unity, if you go over to Indeed.com, for example, has over 1,200 jobs, whereas Unreal is more like 450. So if you were looking at figuring out directly for most employability, the best game engine out there for you to pick, right? now is the Unity game engine. Now the next scenario we're going to go with is your first 2D game. So you want to create a game and you're going to use, you want to make it in two dimensions. In that scenario, uh, we have a couple of suggestions for you. Uh, I would start by saying the Godot game engine is a nice option. It is free and open source, very flexible. It's easy to work with for the most part, and it is good for uh, 2D for sure. It, it is definitely uh, one option out there uh, for 2D. Another option, and this used to be my go-to recommendation, is Love and Lua. Now, Love is not actually a game engine. It's more of a game framework. You're going to be doing everything in code, but everything is pretty simple and straightforward. So if you want to take more of like a code hands-on approach to make a 2D game, Love is a good choice. But if you need to start having things like level design tools and that kind of stuff or animation creation tools, Love is going to leave you uh, a little bit wanting in that regard. Another option here is Game Maker. Game Maker has a lot of published games behind it. The problem with Game Maker is it also has a $100 plus price tag and a number of uh, different uh, plugins required for various different platforms that also have an additional price, price tag. So my actual recommendation here is probably a little bit of out of left field for many of you, but I would actually try GDevelop. GDevelop is a open source free uh, game engine that gives you the ability to work in a completely visual programming language, but also gives you the ability to jump back to JavaScript. Now, the other reason why I recommend it is, and this is a recent development with GDevelop, there is an entire free asset store. So all the sprites and graphics and details and sounds and such you need to make your game, they're all included with it as well. Um, and if you want to go move beyond that visual programming language, you also have the ability to extend it using JavaScript. So uh, it's definitely one to check out. You can actually run it online in your browser. By the way, for a lot of these things, I have done uh, some coverage of them, almost every engine we're gonna talk about today. Uh, and in the linked document, I actually have links to learn more. If you wanna learn more about any of these engines, I've got you covered there. All right, next up, we have a clear winner as well. What if you are an artist trying to showcase your work? In that case, well, the answer is Unreal Engine. Unreal Engine, uh, I recommend it for artists for a couple of reasons, especially if you're just trying to put together a, a CV or something you wanna create, um, you know, a showcase of your real-time work. Maybe you're a character creator and you just wanna make your stuff look good. It is easiest to make Unreal Engine look good. You can make all the other game engines look very good also. It's just out of the box. Unreal Engine probably looks the best. On top of that, it has a very artist-friendly uh, programming language in the form of blueprints. So if you want to move beyond just creating levels to actually adding some logic and gameplay to them, Blueprint is a nice runway for artists. It's very visual oriented and designed for artists to work with. So that combination, if you're looking at creating a portfolio for your artwork, Unreal Engine, hands down, easiest recommendation. Now the next one we have is another pretty easy recommendation. If your priority is open source, not source code available, but an open source project that you wanna work on or contribute with, or your priority is open source for your game engine, well, we're back to Godot again. Godot is the, probably, I think it's safe to say, the biggest open source project out there. There are all alternatives. There's things like Stride on the 3D side, and there's tons of open source 2D game engines. Um, but when it comes to uh, 
a full 2D, 3D game engine with a good clean source code base to jump into and learn from, uh, a nice community to contribute to, and all of the rest of the stuff. If you want to work on an open source project, I would recommend the Godot game engine in this case. Now, next up, we're going to get into shipping a 2D game. Now, this is actually different than making your first, where I developed, I recommended G Develop. In this case, if your goal is to start out and commercially ship. You're trying to make money off of a 2D game. You want to get it on as many platforms as possible, for example. Uh, that is what we are looking at here. Now, the first uh, answer here is, is pretty obvious. Unity. Unity has been made to make hundreds or thousands of very successful shipped 2D titles. One of the real big advantages to Unity 2 is it is available on so many different platforms. Uh, although, and, and in recent versions, they've been adding a lot of 2D support and functionality. There's a lot of cruft in there too. There's a large learning curve. There's a lot of stuff you don't necessarily need as a 2D developer. So that's why they're not necessarily my number one recommendation if you're trying to ship a 2D cross-platform game. Although they do have the best targets. So if you want to get onto the uh, PlayStation, and Xbox, they are a great choice. The next one that we've got on that list is again Godot. Now Godot suffers on the 2D front when it comes to uh, getting into onto consoles. Uh, that's definitely one of the weak areas here, uh, but otherwise it, it's a great 2D game engine. I, I highly recommend it in that regard. It's nice for mixing in 3D as well, just like Unity. Uh, so Godot is definitely an option here. Uh, then another one we've got, once again, is Game Maker. There are a number of really successful published commercial titles shipped with Game Maker. One of the big problems I have with Game Maker right now is to balance its price tag against alternatives like Godot. Why would I use one when the other exists? And a lot of it could come down to personal taste. You may like Game Maker script. You might like their visual programming language, their drag and drop ability. Uh, but... And I want you to be aware that Game Maker exists and is very, very, very viable for making uh, games on multiple different platforms, except for, of course, you're paying for each of those additional platforms. And some of the console stuff can get pretty expensive. Another option we have here is Cocos Creator. Now, this one is really big in Asian markets, a little bit less so here, but Cocos 2D that Cocos Creator is based upon and Cocos Creator themselves have created a number of very successful titles, and it's free. Definitely one worth checking out. I've done some tutorials on it. I am a fan of Cocos Creator, but at the end of the day, if I personally was going to create a 2D game that I was going to try and sell on multiple different platforms, my choice would be the default game engine. I really, really like the default game engine. The only problem here is the only platform being supported there is uh, the Nintendo Switch uh, of the consoles out there. So you still don't have the reach that you would have with Unity. If you want to make a 2D game for uh, the consoles, you're going to either have additional work to do in this regard, uh, either on something like Default or the Godot game engine, or you're better off choosing Unity. But if you're mostly aiming at getting it on mobile, Switch, desktop, web, I love the default game engine. I've done a great tutorial. I've done a great tutorial. Let's toot my own horn. I've done a tutorial series on the default engine. I've actually done two. I love the way this works. It is very clean, streamlined. Once you learn how to do things in default, you're going to get a level of productivity that you can't touch in other environments. It's got a great visual editor, great coding. Uh, it uses Lua as the scripting language. It's got all the tools you'll need, and it's actually open source-ish. It's source available at the very least, and it is free. Uh, so uh, definitely highly recommended on the default side of things for uh, 2D ship titles. And this would be my choice anyways, but you really can't go wrong with any of the other ones I recommended in this video. Now, why wasn't Unreal Engine on there? Unreal Engine doesn't have any 2D functionality. They had something called Paper 2D that they mostly dropped it. It's available as a community supported project, but out of the box, Unreal just doesn't seem to be focusing on 2D. So if you go with the Unreal route for a 2D uh, cross-platform game, you're going to be doing a lot of work yourself. Now, the next category we're going to look at is making your own game engine. So if you want to look at a game engine to model how you could make your own game engine from it, I have a couple of recommendations. The first one, well, it's the Godot game engine. Now, I mentioned earlier on, if you're going to use, if you wanted to work in an open source project, Godot is kind of a no brainer. Well, if you want to create your own, stealing from Godot is also a bit of a no brainer. It's got a nice clean code base, fairly easy to understand if you know the C++ programming language. There's not a lot of really convoluted stuff going on behind the scenes or anything. Now, the next recommendation technically isn't 
a game engine. It's a renderer slash scene graph, but it's also been used in, uh, was it game engine architecture? It was used in a game engine book about how to make game engines and they based it around Ogre. So if you were looking to do that, well, obviously Ogre is a pretty good choice there. But at the end of the day, my recommendation, if you want to learn how to build game engines, it's the G3D Innovation Engine. Uh, this is basically a commercial grade C++ game engine, completely open source, designed around the idea of teaching. Uh, so the, the people behind this are uh, primarily maintained by Morgan McGuire, uh, Stanley Majerik, uh, and so on. The guys at NVIDIA, Stanford University, Oculus Research, and so on. When new technologies come out, they use G3D as a test bed for it. There are a ton of different samples in there. There is a ton of documentation and materials and so on. So if you are looking to create your own game engine and you want reference materials to work from, point blank, check out the G3D Innovation Engine, completely open source and completely free. Now, if you want to just build your own first 3D game, kind of like the old first 2D game, so you're a beginner and you want to build a 3D game, I'm going to do a couple of different suggestions here. We're going to first off start with you uh, have no programming experience at all. In that case, a good choice is actually BuildBox. You can do quite a bit out of the box without having to do any programming whatsoever. It used to be outrageously, stupidly expensive. They've made free versions and they've brought the pricing down to make it much more realistic. Um, so BuildBox is a good opportunity if you have literally zero programming background and you want to make a 3D game. Now, another great option that's kind of coming up is this whole games as games thing. We've got more and more uh, games as game development things. We've got things like uh, Roblox and Minecraft and such that are really moving people in these regards. Well, one of the big ones out there is core. This is up and coming. This is actually built on top of the Unreal Engine, but they make it so easy to make your own game levels kind of mix and match from what they've got there. It's a good entry point if you want to start making 3D games, and you can also um, script in the Lua programming language, so things can get a bit more complicated. So if you're looking to create your first 3D game, Core is a pretty good choice, and they're also moving towards uh, making games so that you can actually make some money off them if people play your games. They also make it very easy to share your games with other people. Core has a lot of potential. Now, if we get into the world of making your first 3D game uh, from code to learn that way, well, an obvious answer, once again, is the Unity Game Engine. It is a good choice here. Uh, if, if you want to go that route, and the nice thing with uh, going with first 3D game in terms of Unity is there's a huge community, a huge asset store, and a ton of tutorials out there. The disadvantage is there's also a lot in there. You're going to get confusing things like, okay, what's what's the universal render pipeline versus the standard pipeline versus the high def render pipeline? It is challenging. So the other option here, I guess I'll call this one uh, a tie, which is a bit of a cop out. So we have Unity for your first 3D if you're comfortable with programming. If not, or still if you are, I guess, the two programming ones I would recommend are Unity and the Godot Game Engine. Now, the Godot Game Engine uh, is in the process of Godot 4 is in development right now. And when that comes, we're going to get better graphics, uh, better rendering, new capabilities, um, better lighting, and all of those things. And that's going to probably be a half a year to a year out at the least. So you're not going to probably get the same graphic fidelity out of the box that you would from like Unreal or Unity from Godot. But again, we are talking about your first game here. And in that scenario, I find Godot is one of the most straightforward and easy to learn uh, packages out there. And I could easily recommend this for your first 3D game. Now, when you start getting, again, into larger games, if you're trying to build a AAA title, no. But at the same time, if it's your first 3D game, don't try to build a AAA title. You can't. It just, you can't. All right, so the next category, uh, I'm kind of going to cheat on a bit. Uh, it's if you want to teach a kid how to play. And the truth of the matter is, I did a large article on this already. I broke it down into basically on the age of the person you're teaching, a number of different recommendations there. And I leave them here. We've got things like um, Lua again, uh, Stencil, Scratch, Alice. Uh, there's a number of programming languages that are specifically designed for kids and like Construct 2 as well. And a lot of these are still great recommendations. Game Maker made the list again too, although for a younger kid, I wouldn't recommend Game Maker. And sadly, there is that price tag there. Um, so there are a number of options out there, Pi Game, Stencil, um, and then another one I would recommend after the fact that's come out since I did this article, which by the way is linked, uh, is Make Code. Make Code is 
a Microsoft project. It's a visual programming language, very similar to some of the ones I just mentioned. Uh, it is excellent. There's also an entire community built around it for learning uh, and um, hardware that you can run your games on. It's a very nice, straightforward, easy way to get kids involved in game programming. So Make Code would probably be my modern day recommendation. Now, when it comes to teaching kids how to program, there's really kind of a couple of things. How good are they at math? How good are they at reading? If those aren't really their strong points, you're going to want to go with a more visual flow charty kind of thing. Or we've got some like Alice that literally it's just sort of drag and drop of pictures and images and so on. And that's a great choice there. But as you get more uh, capability in terms of uh, reading and mathematics, then you can also get more into the programming side of things. So that it's a gamut, a sliding gamut there if you want to get a child involved in it. Uh, those would be my recommendations. Now next up, we're gonna do the same thing we did with 2D. Now let's say you are looking to ship a 3D title uh, commercially. In this scenario, I think there is just a straight up tie again. And that comes down to Unreal Engine and Unity again. And not really that exciting, but it's hard to beat these two. If you're trying to create and ship a 3D title uh, out there, they have the two biggest communities. Uh, they have really good um, uh, freebie terms, especially Unreal Engine. Unreal Engine, you've got up to a million dollars in revenue before you have to pay a cent. And then the biggest reason why I would recommend Unity and Unreal Engine when it comes to shipping a 3D commercial title is you get every platform supported. Literally, the hardware manufacturers work with Unreal and Unity first. So if, um, if there's going to be a day one announcement Unity and Unreal will also make an announcement that day. So if there is a new VR headset, Unity and Unreal get early access to the hardware. If there's PlayStation 6, Unity and Unreal Engine have early access to the hardware. They support every major platform and they will always support them better than all of the other options that are out there. Now, there are a number of different choices here. There are a ton of different choices here that you can get into. And we'll, we'll get to that in a minute when we get to the honorable mention stuff. But if you're look, trying to like, if you're scheduling a budget and a team and you're going to be paying people and you want to go with the safest choice for a commercial 3D title, you need an Unreal Engine. It's just the reality of it. Now, next up, we're going to get into creating an HTML5 game engine. Now, there are a number of different options here for an HTML5 game. Sorry, not game engine, game. Uh, you can do this uh, with just about every engine we listed here. Um, Godot has an HTML5 exporter. Unity has an HTML5 exporter. Default has an HTML5 exporter. But if you're trying to create your game actually using HTML and JavaScript or TypeScript, I have three recommendations for you. We'll consider this kind of a three-way tie. If you're creating a 2D title, my hands down recommendation is the framework Phaser. There's something called Phaser Editor if you want to get like more of a, a full game engine experience, you want to have level editing and so on. But if I was going to create a 2D HTML5 game actually using HTML and JavaScript, Phaser would be my choice. Open source, a load of demos, constantly updated, an excellent, excellent framework, an easy recommendation. Now, when it comes to 3D, there are two options immediately there is Play Canvas. And there is Babylon JS, and they're both excellent. And I've done tutorial series on both of them. Um, Play Canvas has slightly more tooling, uh, but they're both. If you're looking to create a 3D game using HTML, those are the kind of a no-brainer. Those are your two choices. There is a third option there in that you could use 3JS, which is a little bit lower level. It's kind of the equivalent of using something like Ogre instead of Unity or Unreal, for example. It, it provides you the stuff you need to build a game engine on top of, uh, and it's an open source project as well. But when it comes to full-blown game engines, I would choose between Babylon JS and play canvas when it comes to 3D. And for 2D, I would go with phaser. Of course, you can also just basically, if if the web is just another target for you, if your game isn't just web only, uh, you could use any of the engines we talked about that have an HTML export. But if you're tr trying to design and your primary target is the web, those would be my three recommendations. All right, so that is all of the categories we went through, but there's also kind of an 
honorable mentions category here, there are a number of game engines that could easily fit in. And then I'm not even getting into the frame reps I didn't touch on. There's a ton of, like, Hacks, Mono Game, SDL, SFML, Allegro that have been around for ages that you can use basically in code to create your own games. And we've also got things like LibGDX. There is a ton of frameworks out there that are excellent that you could use to build your own game engine upon. The honorable mentions, though, I'm going to look at some of either the up and comings or the um, more established also players. They sometimes may have slightly less appealing licensing terms or less targeted platforms or are more recent to this world. So we're going to look at a couple of the options there. So first off, we have CryEngine. Now you've probably heard of CryEngine if you heard of Crisis, CryEngine, uh, Rise, Son of Rome. There, there's a ton of games made using CryEngine, MechWarrior Online. Uh, it's a very nice high fidelity game engine for sure. Uh, and they've been kind of really working on it to try and uh, almost recreate it. It's now lightweight. It's got better documentation than it ever did, which was always a flaw with CryEngine. But at the same time, recently, they've gotten really slow with their updates. So they're hard to recommend on that regard. And they're not quite on mobile yet, which is something that's in the works. So there's some work that they have to do. But CryEngine can almost be thought of as a new engine at this point in time. And I'm really kind of cheering for them. Another one that um, is new and exciting and probably one of the ones I find most interesting to play with right now is the Unigine game engine. Now, they always had... They've, they've kind of just focused on a different market. Unigine was more in the simulation and enterprise space. They've only recently gave a, or released a free version that you can come and play with and started targeting gaming more. So they don't have a lot of a resume when it comes to the world of games, but they have an amazingly capable C-sharp powered game engine, C++ and C-sharp. Uh, it's, it's a great package. They're just only recently starting to really focus on the game space. Uh, but there is a lot of potential with Unity, and especially if a couple of really big titles get shipped. There's someone, someone from the past, Microprose. Yeah, Microprose apparently announced that they're going to be making a number of games using the Unity game engine going forward. Another one that we've got out there is Stride. Now, Stride is a game engine that gets renamed a lot. Stride started life as Paradox 3D, which they renamed it because, well, there's a game company called Paradox, so that was confusing. So then they called it Zenko. And then uh, they went from being a commercial project as Zenko to an open source project, at which point they renamed it to Stride. Uh, it is a really clean, C-sharp powered 3D game engine, open source now, uh, very interesting. It's just the, the development has been pretty quiet uh, since they've gone open source. I'm hoping to start hearing more and more from Stride, uh, but it's definitely gotten a bit quiet on that front. Now, another one out there is Lumberyard. Now, Lumberyard is an interesting one. If you follow my channel, it, normally you hear me swearing every three or four months. That's because a new version of Lumberyard shipped and the installation process is painful. But the engine itself, it's based off of a fork of CryEngine, and Amazon have been throwing a huge amount of money at this thing, and it is completely free for you to use. It is also being used by one of the uh, biggest budgeted games in all of history. Uh, we're not going to get into the uh, politics of it, uh, but Star Citizen is using Amazon Lumberyard. So uh, it is a huge, huge game engine that's getting a lot of updates. Uh, it's getting better. I will really say that. Every time I use it, I like it a little bit more. And the big thing about Lumberyard, it is it is completely free. You're getting a AAA caliber game engine completely for free as long as you use their online components or roll your own. So that's a pretty sweet deal. It's just they don't have any really successful titles around Lumberyard. And Amazon Game Studios is a mess. So they keep canceling titles. Uh, so... That's that. And then another one, probably the one that I've been most excited about in terms of recent releases, is the Flax engine. This one just shipped the end of 2020, uh, and it's got a lot of potential. I, I really like it. It's, it's also got a decent number of bugs that are getting worked out at a really rapid rate, uh, but it's definitely one that I have my eye on and I'm going to be covering on the channel in some form a little bit more. There's Again, there are a ton more out there. I just talked about the machinery, for example, the spiritual successor to the Stingray engine. Uh, in fact, if you're wondering about game engines and nothing that I just talked about or none of the scenarios I just talked about appeal to you, well, there's the good news because I have been covering game engines for quite a while. And as you can see, a lot of the ones we just talked about are here. Things like um, Stride, Lumberyard, Flax, and, and so on. Uh, but then there's all kinds of other stuff. There's Shiro's Game Tech, which is a bunch of uh, hacks, things that kind of go work together that were used to make dead cells. Um, 
and we got micro consoles like Pixel Vision, we've got uh, Ursina Engine, The Forge, Neo Axis. It, it just kind of keeps going and going and going. So if nothing I said appealed to you, something somewhere on this list hopefully will. So there are a ton of options out there. By the way, if you're also looking to try and reverse things a little bit, and so you said you want to do, I want to use this game, sorry, this programming language to create my games. You want to come at it from that perspective? Uh, check out these playlists here in that I've done one for Python, game engines, JavaScript, uh, Hacks, Lua, C Sharp, C++. Uh, so if you want to... Uh, just kind of reverse things and you want to find out all of the game engines that use your preferred programming language and try and pick things that way. I broke it down that way as well, but we're going to leave it here because we we're at the 25 minute mark and we covered quite a bit. Now, my particular recommendations are just mine. And when I say I would pick this for this, for example, when I said uh, if I was going to make a 2D title commercial, I would probably choose the default game engine. I'm not saying that default is the best 2D game engine out there. It's just what I would personally pick and that's what I would recommend. Um, in a lot of these cases, the runner up would be just as good. Or in some cases, if I was like just looking to learn or if I was doing it for fun, I would probably pick something a little bit more obscure. Also, there are a number of different options out there that fit in different particular scenarios. For example, you can see right up here, Pixel Game Maker. Hey, I wouldn't recommend that one to anybody, but it's sister the uh, RPG maker, for example, if you're trying to set out to make a JRPG style game, well, it's a pretty good choice. Same way as if you're trying to make something like a voxel based role playing game, RPG maker in a box could be a good pick for you. So there are so many options out there that not being included on this list doesn't mean that I don't particularly recommend it. Just one of those things to, to keep in mind when going through this. But I do have this entire playlist of uh, game engines I have covered on the channel and then a breakdown of game engine options by programming language. If nothing you saw here helps you out, maybe one of those things will. So that was it. That was what game engines I would recommend in 2021 for a variety of different scenarios. And the big thing I want to close on, and this is a point that I made here earlier is if you're looking to ship a 3d cross-platform title and you're trying to get into that a to triple a space well you, you wouldn't be watching this video because frankly that decision is being made by a group of people at a large company with a big budget you generally aren't a triple a audience here uh, and if you are there's a lot of factors at play for you there, there are just so many different choices when it comes to triple a just really honestly ask yourself are you really making a AAA game? You can be making a high quality game, a high visual fidelity game. Just know there is a, a, a difference there. Now, don't get me wrong. You can use something like, like Unreal Engine was used to create Mortal Shells by a team of, I think, eight or nine people. And that would look like a real high quality polished, at least slice of a game. Uh, so I'm not talking about quality here. Just do keep in mind, there are things like, are you going to make more than a million dollars? And that, that is honestly one of those things you have to factor when trying to figure out budgeting. Because with Unreal Engine, you can make up to a million dollars before you have to pay any royalty. Whereas, say, CryEngine is a 6% royalty flat rate after something like $3,000 a quarter. But really, are you expecting to make over a million dollars or under a million? Is it really honestly a factor to you? And that's one of those things to really keep in mind when making these decisions. Because a lot of people, uh, they discard things based off of a scenario in which, let's just say, if you have to start paying that million dollar royalty or you're paying, you know, 6% of your game's $10 million out to CryEngine and licensing as a scenario, it will, you, will you hit the jackpot with your game anyway. So I wouldn't worry about that particular aspect too much. So a lot of people get hung up in this whole, I want to create the next super AAA game, MMO, whatever, or they could potentially make it. Don't get too overwhelmed by that area, especially if you are just starting out. So anyways, that's my closing recommendation. And that is my guide. Now, where would you, would you disagree or agree with anything I've said here? Are there other categories you'd like me to cover? Uh, I can't obviously edit the video, but I can definitely give recommendations for different scenarios. So if you've got different things other than the particular scenarios I covered, let me know. I'll do my best to cover them down below. So that's it. Let me know what you think. Comments down below. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.